Hey, what's going on everyone and welcome back to once again another video. Today we're going to be talking about how to dominate ground war to grind Damascus camos. And then if you're just like a main ground war player, this is just going to be how to dominate ground war in the first place if you are not already doing really well in the game. In the background, we do have some port gameplay. Probably my fourth or fifth game on port, honestly. I rarely ever play this map. I try to avoid it as much as possible, but after this gameplay, I really enjoy it. So we're going to talk about the kind of tricks and tips that I use just to get good gameplays and how I grinded for Damascus on Ground War because I did a lot of the challenges on Ground War, like the long shots, mounted, assault rifles, LMGs, um, even some of the SMGs and all the marksmen and sniper rifles I did strictly on Ground War. Like I would just grind Ground War for like four hours a day until I got a gun gold or got a bunch of challenges done. And you know, I just finished a physics midterm, so we're gonna... That was probably really quiet, but I'm literally cracking open a cold one right now. Just took a big sip right there. But uh, yeah, we're gonna just chill. You know, have a good one. So, first things first. What I like to do is I like to pick off a good starting point. And what I mean by that is once you spawn, I usually tend to go for the enemy's secondary flag. So like they'll have their home base at A and then they'll have their B flag or I will go to C. And the gameplay in the background, I went to C. And a good start is always important because how you start tends to set the tone for the rest of the game. And I know that kind of sounds like something straight out of sports, but literally your start in ground war sets the tone for the game. If you have a sloppy start, it is really hard to rebound and get good gameplay for the rest of the game or just play good for the rest of the game. This might just be a me thing, but I find if I start off strong with capping the C objective or the enemy's second objective and I get a few kills here and there, I will basically have a good game for the rest of the game. And what I also like to do is once I establish my start of a game, I will tend to hold that area down. So for the gameplay in the background on port, you're going to see me hold the vacant area, also known as the C flag. I hold it down, get full streaks, go on a 20 gun streak, and um, yeah. So a really good thing to do, especially if you're grinding assault rifles, SMGs, and even LMGs, is kind of get in those close quarter areas on ground war maps. So Karst River Quarry, that's going to be your C, B, and D flag. Port, that's going to be your D and C flag, sometimes B, but there is that huge open street going from C to B, that will actually screw you over sometimes if enemies are holding long lanes of sight trying to get some sniper kills in there. On farms, which I haven't seen in rotation in a while, but if farms is taken out or put back in or whatever, a good area is the C, D, and E area for close quarters. And then B and A is more of that long range, more of the open area. But yeah, so, oh, also Taversk, uh, good close range areas are C flag, D flag, B flag, like that kind of center street area. Um, keep in mind that you will be getting sniped like crazy on that map. And then if you're playing on an Aya Palace, basically the A flag, C flag, and E flag are all super close quarters areas, especially even B and D are close quarters as well. So for those assault rifles, submachine guns, and LMGs, and even if you're working on shotguns or pistols, you're going to want to stick to those close range areas. For weapons like um, a marksman rifle, if you're using the FAL, if you're using a sniper rifle, if you're using the FAMAS, or I guess it's the FR556 in this game, you're going to want to hold down those longer ranges. So you can see me getting long shots with the M13 quite easily. And I don't think I have a secondary sniper in this game. But what I like to tend to do now is I will have the M13, or I guess for you guys, that's going to be whatever gun you want to get gold or work on or just use. I always have that as my primary. So for my ground war class setup, I will have it on screen somewhere. And then, so I run the M13 and then as a secondary, I have the AX50. So if there's snipers shooting at me from a long range where I won't be able to peg them down with the M13, then I will pull out the AX50 and then just snipe them. And also on ground war, it is sometimes fun to just pull out the AX50 or just any sniper of your choice and then just use it to get those long range kills as well. Because sometimes in those close range areas, so for me on C flag, there's gonna be enemies on the roof of B quite a lot and the roof of D and even on the large cranes on, part, on port. So having that sniper is gonna definitely benefit you there as well. Also, if you are rushing around the map, so say you don't like holding down a specific area of ground war, even though that is a very viable option in the game. If you are just 
trying to rush around from flag to flag and capture as many flags as you can. Keep in mind that if you rush carelessly, you will get killed by people just from different angles that you didn't even know they were at. That's just the nature of ground war. The big maps and big player counts cause for players to be in positions where you wouldn't expect them to be. So for example, if I was in the C flag on port and I was pushing from B to A, I probably would take my time pushing. So I would like kind of find cover as I go. So I would run across the street. I would of course check both ways before I cross. And, and I know it's kind of sounds like a meme, but I would gen genuinely, um, check to see what enemies were watching the street or not like that. And if I think the coast is clear, I'll sprint across the street, grab some cover, uh, check my six and my surroundings to see if any enemies are noticing me or not like that. And then I'll keep pushing. I'll kill a few enemies here and there, and then I'll make it to my objective. If I were to rush carelessly and then just go straight to a flag, chances are I'm going to get killed because teammates aren't necessarily going to help you in this game mode. If you are communicating, say you're in a party with your friends and your like your squad is just full of your friends, you can communicate that way and you can trust your teammates a little bit more. But if it's just playing with randoms, I tend to not trust my teammates. I only really use my teammates for spawn locations if I don't want to spawn on a flag, if they're in a good position. That's the only thing I do. I like use my teammates for. Also, don't trust your teammates in general in Ground War. And I know it's a huge team-based game mode with the 30... I think it's like 32v32 player count. But honestly, if you are a solo player like me, your best chance or best case scenario, you will have some teammates that will cover your back. Um, but I, I never see any teammates go out of their way to make those kind of plays to capture a flag or do anything like that. So... I tend to be a little bit selfish in those ways with ground war and it does also help me sometimes. Um, also getting your kill streaks is fun so once you get your kill streaks up if you just use them so in the background I'm using the AC-130 right now and I'm just kind of picking off people here and there and kill streaks are super fun in ground war but while going for camos I do recommend running things like the advanced UAV for your high kill streaks and of course VTOL so let's talk about kill streaks right now. If you want to do very good in ground war uh, and if you're getting streaks, the streaks I recommend using is the VTOL because you can have that up in the air guarding an area that you're trying to hold down or get kills with. It'll kill those people that are trying to flank you and it will also just help you get kills in general. So I'll have the VTOL as the first streak I unlock and then I will have the support helo. So it's the AI controlled helicopter. So not the chopper gunner, which I'm using right now, but the AI controlled one. I will have that, that will cover my six as well and kind of protect me from those people on roofs and whatnot. And then for my third kill streak, I will have the advanced UAV. And then if I'm going for ribbon challenges or a specific daily challenge where it says call in 25 UAVs, then I'll switch and use UAVs in general. So kill streaks, pretty straightforward. Also, if you're just grinding for camos and you don't really care about kill streaks and you don't really need their support if you're a good player or just don't care for trying to stay alive for as much as possible uh, you can use whatever you want as well also one thing that i do want to mention if you are trying to get camos done as soon as possibly sometimes you will make careless mistakes where you will end up dying in a certain situation which isn't necessarily a bad thing because in this game i'm playing pretty conservative while still getting a lot of kills um, but if you're a player that likes to rush around and try and like get camos done as fast as possible I would be like running to D flag right now or like B flag trying to get camel challenges done, which is probably what a lot of people are trying to do. And you will die along the way. So if you're not worried about kill death ratio or getting your streaks for support or anything like that, it's super straightforward and easy just to rush flags. But just keep in mind that if you aren't necessarily a ground war player or aren't used to the spawns or anything like that, it's super easy to get overrun. And especially one thing I do want to mention try to keep track of where enemies are going to be spawning and i know this is kind of weird because there's enemies spawning re like regardless of where you think they're going to be they're going to be somewhere else as well if you are pushing an enemy's objective expect the enemies to be spawning in areas around you behind you in front of you if you are like especially if you are one of the only people on your team pushing that objective so say i'm pushing the e flag which the enemy has right now there's going to be enemies spawning all over E and all around E. 
And if I was there by myself, I would be trying to play as cautiously as possible so I don't get picked off super easily. Because once you get established in an enemy spawn point, it is super easy to just drop a bunch of kills. I will do this in Karis River Quarry and now Port and Anaya Palace. I will try to spawn trap as much as possible. Spawn trapping does go very well in Ground War once you get used to it, but while learning it, you will get punished by the enemy players that know the spawns and know where you're coming from. You will also have enemies that will spawn on squad mates. So for example, say you have one enemy on the hill of Karst River Quarry and you're kind of you're trying to flank him because he killed you a couple times with a sniper and you want to get a revenge kill on him. If his squad mates are going to be spawning on him, you can kind of milk a couple of those squad spawn kills so they will spawn on that teammate of theirs. Uh, so while going for one guy, you might have two guys spawn out of thin air just because that's the how the game works, I'm going to say. So you can get a couple easy kills that way. Also, grinding camos, it's super easy to just get long shots regardless of what weapon you're using just because these maps are so big. I find it that I get long shots naturally a lot anyway, unless I'm pushing an enemy's objective or trying to capture a flag or something like that. Also, try to keep control of the flags. So try to, I know it's pretty hard doing this solo, or even if you have a squad full of friends, because it's only going to be four of you versus the world, basically. It's going to be harder to do this, but try and keep the enemies towards capturing only two flags. So. Right now, they have B and D, which means the enemies are going to be spawning at those two objectives. And you can kind of predict where they're going to try and go to, because they're probably going to try and go cap another flag. This is even easier if your team has all three linear objectives. So A, B, C, or I'm trying to think of the things, <laughs> or E, D, and C. If you have a linear objective capture like that, you can predict that the enemies are going to be trying to spawn at the B flag. And then they're also gonna be spawning at A flag, but mostly B. So if you can flank and get around on some of the little side paths of the map to try and get in between their two objectives, you can kind of pick them off without them knowing where you are. And of course, if you do kill a bunch of enemies, they will be watching the kill cam. So make sure you're not staying in one spot the whole time. Just kind of move around as much as you can just to cover as much ground. And so the enemies will always be on edge of where you are. So long shots, super easy to get because you will be just getting long shots regardless this is also a really good game mode for mounted kills because if you're in a really good power position or a position you can see a bunch of enemies push from you can mount up on a ledge or corner and then just get those easy kills just the general spray paint kills challenge in ground war is super easy as well also there's always enemy uavs and personal uavs up so getting launcher challenges done is super easy for those kill streak challenges ground streaks not so much anymore because they've patched it quite a bit but getting those air streaks and just general kill streaks destroyed are pretty easy to do also if you're doing the three kills without dying challenge you're going to be getting hopefully if you are good at the game or are progressing at your skill at the game you will be getting tons of kills where it's three kills without dying so for that skulls challenge super easy to do very rarely you will see someone using a shotgun in this game so if you are using a shotgun or a pistol in ground war it will be very rare for you to get point blanks and stuff like that because you're gonna have to be super close to an enemy's objective or flanking them or just get super lucky where an enemy turns the corner and doesn't see you there so those close quarter weapons i tend to stick with hardcore headquarters super straightforward and easy there as well i'm trying to think if there's anything i'm missing oh i want to talk about positioning as well if you are using a sniper or a marksman rifle or you are trying to get long shots try to stick to the outsides of the maps just because the insides of the maps are so hectic and that's usually where all the players trying to capture your objective are going to be running so if i'm in the middle of karst river quarry kind of like by that sea flag unless i'm on the roof so i'm just talking on like the ground level if i'm on the ground level with a sniper that is such a bad position and a lot of players tend to not know that since i still see a lot of snipers on that ground level try to get with a sniper as high up as possible on Taverse district this is super super easy to do because there's just skyscrapers everywhere but on a map like port or karst river quarry or anaya palace try and get up as high as you can possibly on top of buildings if possible same thing with farm and then just stick to the outsides of the map think of it as a don't think of the like the mini map or like the full map as a donut where you're just trying to stick to the outside and then avoid the inside because if you're on the outside, you will be aiming towards the inside of the map and getting those easy kills that way as well. So some pretty straightforward tips and tricks for you guys 
on Ground War. If there is anything I missed and you want to share it with people that also watch this video, comment that down below. That would be much appreciated. Plus, as well as I might learn something also. Leave a like if you guys did enjoy. Dislike if you didn't. Keep in mind, though, you're a certified bruh in the bruh moment, gang, if you do leave a like. As always, I'm about to head out, and if there is one, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.